Hello, Wonder Hussy here, back in Las Vegas. That's right, I had to come to Vegas for the day to run some errands. And well, figured while I was here anyway, I might as well shoot a video. Now I just made a video talking about the town where I live now, out on the edge of Death Valley, but I thought it might be fun to make a video about all the places I lived when I lived here in Vegas. Okay, I lived here for 21 years and I moved around a decent bit in that time. So it might be interesting to all of you to see the places that I lived when I lived here. And the first place, well, when I first moved to Vegas, I didn't know anybody here. I didn't know anything about the city. I just knew that rents were low and it was astonishingly easy to find an apartment back then. I don't know if this is still a thing, but Back then they had these things called apartment finding services where you would go into this office and the lady would interview you, ask you how much you wanna pay, what part of town do you wanna live in? And then she would send you to these different complexes, apartment complexes that she recommended. And so I guess they were probably getting a kickback from the apartment complexes. I'm not really sure how it worked, but all I know is it made it real easy for someone who had hardly ever even been to Vegas to find a place to live. So I went into the apartment finding service. I told her, I want to live on the strip. You know, I'm moving to Vegas. I want to live in the middle of all the action. I don't want to live out in the suburbs in Summerlin or Green Valley. If I'm moving to Vegas, by golly, I want to live in Vegas. So I told her I wanted to live as close to the strip as possible. And she said, oh honey, you know, those aren't very good neighborhoods. And she was right back then, this was in the year 2000, all the apartments that were right near the strip were pretty sketchy. You know, nowadays they build all these high rises and these luxury condos for people who want that big city living experience. Well, we didn't have anything like that back then. All you had were these dingy little, you know, two story apartment complexes where all the housekeeping people lived. And they were pretty sketchy. Golly, I'm not used to all this hustle and bustle, man. I'm from the country. This is freaking me out. Anyway, so I told her I wanted to live on the strip. She told me, oh honey, those places aren't very safe, but she referred me to a complex that, well, while it wasn't really on the strip, it was very close to a casino, and that is the Palace Station. Later made infamous by the fact that this was where O.J. Simpson finally got arrested and put in prison. I think he broke into somebody's room and stole a bunch of sports memorabilia. Right here at this kind of down at heels locals casino. This isn't even a casino that most people who come to Vegas would stay at. It's just a place where locals come to gamble because Lord knows there's a lot of local gamblers. Matter of fact, this was just a tent when it first started. It was just a, a tent with a bingo hall in it. That's how badly locals wanted to gamble. Meanwhile, years later, it's grown into a pretty nice resort. Uh, but anyway, when I moved here back in the day, it wasn't nearly as nice. It wasn't a tent, but it wasn't as nice as this. So I thought, well, Golly, it's not the strip, but at least I'm near a casino. Now the apartments that I lived in are right down the street, so I'm gonna get in my car and drive over there and see if it looks anything like it did 21 years ago when I moved to Vegas in October 2000. Okay, so for those of you who don't know Vegas, uh, the Palace Station is right off the interstate that runs through Vegas at the intersection with uh, Sahara Avenue. Okay, that's one of the biggest streets in Vegas. It's the one that the Sahara Hotel is on, obviously. It was actually rated the most dangerous street in America by Dateline NBC because, well, I mean, you can see there's four lanes in both directions and people really blow up and down this road. So it is pretty dangerous if you're a pedestrian, but I don't know, for being on a really, really busy road or being right off a really, really busy road, this apartment complex was awesome. Now I only lived here for one year, uh, but I didn't have any problems in that year at all. It was a, I mean, the lady at the apartment finding service did me right. She sent me to a place that was very quiet and very safe and oh gosh, well I'm driving in now and I see they changed the name already. It used to be called Sahara Palms, now it's called Lux. Ain't that the way things go? They have to change everything to some weird, short, you know, preferably less than five letter word name. But the apartments, oh my God, the apartments actually look 
exactly like they did when I lived here. Oh my God, this is weird. This is like going into a time capsule. Oh gosh, it's gated now. It wasn't gated when I lived here. Let's see, the apartment that I lived in was right down here. Matter of fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and park right here because that's what was cool about these apartments is they're on this little cul-de-sac. Now listen to how much quieter it is right here than where it was when I, where I shot the opening to this video. And we only drove like not far at all. I mean, if I zoom in, you can see that's the palace station right there. Matter of fact, if you turn this way, you can also see dun 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 Trump Tower. So like I said, this woman at the apartment finding service actually did right by me because she found me a place that was quiet a place that was safe and a place that was close to the strip relatively man this is here's the apartment i lived in i'll show you the exact unit i mean i can't go in because it's gated now and i also don't want to get arrested for being creepy but it was right here in this building under this huge isn't that an olive tree wow look at the size of that tree i'm sure it was there when i was here okay my apartment was second floor let me see if i can read i don't even remember what the apartment number was anyway as you can see, let me turn my camera around. This really isn't a bad place to live at all for being right in the middle of Las Vegas, AKA one of the craziest cities in the world. Matter of fact, the only downside of living here was the fact that there's an In-N-Out Burger uh, on the other side of that building. So, well, In-N-Out Burger, if you've ever had that, it's delicious, it's affordable, and it's open late. So no matter how late I had to work, it seems like I could never avoid going through that dang drive through and getting myself a big old greasy cheeseburger, fries, and a shake. But other than that, there were no complaints at all. You know what my rent was when I moved here? It was, remember it was the year 2000. My rent was $560 for a one bedroom apartment. I don't remember what the square footage was, but you know, it, had a, it wasn't a studio, it was a full one bedroom. And like I said, nice complex. There was a pool, there was a jacuzzi, there was a gym and there were no cockroaches. Very nice, very pleasant experience. 10 out of 10, would definitely recommend staying here again. But then after living here in Vegas for a year, well, a little thing called September 11th, 2001 happened. And if you remember anything about September 11th, it destroyed tourism. I mean, it destroyed a lot of things and I don't mean to minimize what happened to the people who were actually there, but tourism was completely decimated in Vegas. A lot of people were laid off. I wasn't really laid off, but it just felt like the time was right for me to leave. I kind of had my one year in Vegas. I had my fill. I had chicken fried steak and eggs at every 24 hour coffee shop on the strip. I felt like I had done everything there was to do. And it was time for me to go back to California <laughs> where my family all still lived. I missed my family. So I moved back to the Bay area where I'm from but you know what they say, you can never go home. Well, they're right. I got back there and well, I realized that I had gotten used to the 24 hour energy of this city. And so I was always on the go, go, go wanting to do something. And well, folks back there simply weren't like that. So I thought, okay, well, where else can I move? Oh, I know I'll go to Hollywood. So I drove out to Hollywood with my, with my poor long suffering sister to look for an apartment there. And unfortunately that didn't work out because, well, if you've ever been to Hollywood, you know how expensive everything is, but I found an apartment down there for like, mm, I think 700 bucks a month, but the parking was such a nightmare. And at that time I was driving a 1986 Lincoln town car. Okay. If you've ever watched any of my videos about my life, I had this huge pink Lincoln town car when I moved here and it was 18 and a half feet long. Uh, it wasn't exactly easy to park in a normal city, let alone in a place like Hollywood, where, well, if you've ever been there, you know, parking is at a premium. So I got discouraged. Unfortunately, I gave up on my Hollywood dream because I couldn't find a place to park my boat. And I came crawling back here. And once I got back to Vegas, while I was looking for another apartment, and I don't know why I didn't just go back to the same apartments that I lived in the first time, I decided to find a new place. And while I was looking for a new place, I stayed here at the fabulous Holiday Royale. Uh, I think it's 
weekly, monthly, right by the airport, right by the Hard Rock Hotel, centrally located, very cool mid-century modern 60s architecture. Unfortunately, I found it to be kind of a depressing place because, well, if you've ever stayed in one of those weekly or monthly rentals, it's kind of like transient people down on their luck. I guess maybe I was still kind of depressed myself about not going to Hollywood and crawling back to Vegas. So I only stayed here as little time as possible, uh, just long enough to find an apartment and GTFO. But I will say, I think somebody who watches my channel either used to own or still owns or used to manage or still manages this fine complex. So I certainly don't mean to disparage the Holiday Royale. Matter of fact, I would also recommend staying here. I'm sure it's even nicer now than it was back then. Uh, you can see the strip is right there in the background. Like I said, the Hard Rock Hotel's right there. The friggin' Hofbrau House is right across the street. I mean, talk about location, location, location. I would definitely recommend staying here if you need a short-term rental in Vegas. But for me, I only stayed there two weeks and then I moved in to my next apartment. Now, for my next apartment, I decided to stay over here on the east side. We're on the east side of the strip now. My first apartment, remember, was over on Sahara and I-15. This place, Holiday Royale, was on Paradise Road. If you've ever been to Vegas and you've been to a convention, well, the convention center is also on Paradise Road. I think it's the closest street to the strip on the east side. And I still wanted to live as close as possible to the strip, so my next apartment was on Paradise Road, actually right next to the convention center. Okay, wow. I can see this apartment complex has also changed its name. It was called Paradise Palms when I lived here, but like I said in the first place, the trend seems to be to change the names of apartment complexes and restaurants to some weird little less than five letter word. So E-V-O-Q, I guess it's pronounced evoke. That's what it's called now. But when I lived here, well, it was the good old Paradise Palms. It looked pretty much the same, to be honest. And yes, there is an Embassy Suites sign up there, but I can assure you this place was nothing like living at the Embassy Suites. That's just because the Embassy Suites is right next door to this apartment complex. I told you, we're right next to the convention centers. Well, right on the other side of this ghetto hotel, which I'll get you in a minute. Anyway, I only lived in this apartment for, gosh, a couple few months. Uh, I liked it. I liked the location and the apartment itself. I liked the layout of it but somebody was messing with my car here. Remember, I had that big pink Lincoln Town car and I had my assigned covered parking spot, but some hater that lived in the apartment complex kept drawing dicks on the side of my door, like with a ballpoint pen, so much so that it actually scratched the paint and I think even kind of like dented the door a little. And so I went to the apartment manager about it, but I don't know, I guess there was nothing they could do, whatever. And I just felt unsafe, like somebody was attacking me and like, okay, sure, they're just messing with my car now, but what if they start messing with me? I just had a bad vibe about the whole situation. So even though I had only lived there two months and I signed a six month lease, I actually broke my lease early and left. And if you've ever broken an apartment lease, you know it ain't cheap. I wanna say I had to, well, my rent here was probably around 600 bucks a month. And I think the to break the lease was like 11 or 1200. So it cost me a pretty penny, but I felt it was worth it for my safety. And I don't remember if this complex was fenced in like this back when I lived there, but it sure is locked up tighter than a you know what now. So we won't be able to go in and find the exact apartment I lived in. And to be honest, I don't think I would remember which one it was anyways. Uh, gosh, I only lived there for two months, like I said. <laughs> There's all these dudes walking by going to the convention. There's some big convention in the convention center right next door. Which, like I said, is on the other side of this other hotel. And that was the only kind of downside about living here, other than the fact that it was noisy, although the monorail wasn't here back when I lived here. This was before they built the monorail. Uh, the only real downside was, <laughs> well, it felt safe enough aside from the fact that somebody was messing with my car, but Right next door on this side, there's a place called, well, I'm not sure you can read that, but it's called the Mardi Gras Hotel. From what I heard and maybe still hear, it's kind of like a, like a meth head crack den type hotel. I don't know, I never had any problems, but then again, I only lived here two months. Maybe if I had lived here longer, I would have experienced some kind of 
theft and break-ins. And come to think of it, maybe it was someone from the Mardi Gras that was drawing dicks on my car. Who knows? Anyway, I broke my lease and I found another apartment. This was, my, this was to be my third and final apartment in Vegas. And this time I went back over to the west side. Okay, this time I moved back over to the west side and instead of being right on the strip or as close to the strip as I could, well, I guess I settled more or less and I, oh gosh, I'm probably about, I would guess a mile, two miles from the strip uh, at an intersection of Sahara and Decatur. Okay, Sahara Avenue, the first street that my first apartment was on, but a little bit farther west uh, Decatur, which I'm standing at the side of right now, is also another giant eight-lane thoroughfare. I mean, it's, that's a huge intersection, Sahara and Decatur. Matter of fact, fun fact, or maybe not so fun fact, I think it had the distinction of being one of the top uh, car theft intersections in the entire country. Uh, fortunately, I never had my car stolen while I lived here, but I did have something else stolen, and I'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, I lived in these apartments here. It's called Shelter Cove. That's what it was called back then as well. Glad to see they didn't go with this weird trend of renaming it something like Anyway, you can see uh, there's a long driveway. It's kind of tucked back off of the street. Actually, it's tucked way back. I think that's why it's called Shelter Cove. It's actually a name that makes sense for once. Um, even though I was at this huge intersection of these two major streets, you know, one being the most dangerous road in America, the intersection itself being the car theft capital of America, well, it was very quiet and peaceful. And that's what I liked about this place when I first came to look at the apartment. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to just walk around the apartment complex uh, and see if they kick me out. But uh, I liked this place a lot. I mean, I like the fact that it had pretty nice, mature landscaping, lots of trees, lots of grass. I feel like I should probably whisper since I'm, <sighs> lurking around this apartment complex like a creeper. Uh, anyway, I like the landscaping. I like the pool. I'll show you the pool complex. Really beautiful swimming pool complex. Um, the only downside was because of all this greenery. Well, unfortunately, I woke up, or I was laying in bed one evening and I looked up at the ceiling and I saw a huge cockroach on the ceiling. And I flipped out because I had never lived anywhere with cockroaches before. My first apartment, I don't know what they did at that complex over by Palace Station because that's probably even older than this complex and mature landscaping, but I never saw a single cockroach there. So they were spraying some good poison, I guess. Anyway, any of the other places I ever lived growing up, we never had cockroaches. So when I saw this cockroach on my ceiling, I flipped out. I had a friend in town that night and I went and stayed at his hotel room because I, oh my God, I can't stay someplace with his cockroaches. Oh, look, we're coming up on the pool now. Oh, look at this, there's even tennis courts. I guess those must have been here when I lived here. I don't remember that, but. That's kind of high class. Fancy. But yeah, here's the pool. And this is what I was all about. You know, most apartment complexes in Vegas have a swimming pool, but not all of them have an island in the middle. When I saw that island, well, this is before I was a model, but I always had the idea of taking quirky and unusual photos. And so I thought, I need to put on a Betty Page wig and a cheetah print dress and drag a ukulele out to that island and have my photo taken. And so that's exactly what I did. <laughs> With an island like that, while well, I was able to overlook the fact that there was a few cockroaches, I called the uh, apartment complex office and they sent somebody out to spray and well then I bought some boric acid and sprinkled that around and I was able to pretty much keep the uh, roach issue at bay. Uh, the entire, oh gosh, I think I lived here like, I think I lived here like five years. Um, so the roaches didn't bother me, but I did have one other serious significant problem when I lived here. And I think, I think I'm right by my old apartment. Let me see, my address was 2661 South Decatur. And I think, oh yeah, that's 2661. It was that apartment right there. The one at the top of the stairs with the cobwebs in front of the door. How about that? That was my balcony. That was my dining room window. That was my kitchen window. This was my parking space. This is where I parked my ginormous pink Lincoln town car uh, until a boyfriend of mine made me get rid of it and to be fair it was having a lot of mechanical problems so i got a, a ford ranger pickup and that used to park right here too how about that isn't that funny it's good to see the old apartment uh looking more or less exactly as it did when i lived here now why did i leave well i mentioned that i had a problem well, 
the only crime that I've ever really been a victim of here in Vegas, and I lived here 21 years. Yeah, one time somebody broke into my car at the gym and stole some stuff out of it, but the only real crime I was a victim of was here. One night I came home from work, and this was after I had lived here, I think I had lived here at least a year, and I renewed my lease. I liked it enough, despite the cockroaches. Like, okay, I'll keep living here. So I had just renewed my lease, and I came home after work one night, and I used to work late. You know, I worked at the at casinos. I was a souvenir photographer, so I didn't get off work till, you know, I don't know, one in the morning, and then I would usually go out, have some drinks. Next thing you know, it'd be like three, four in the morning when I got home. So I got home late one night, had a few drinks, and I had stopped off at Del Taco to get some fast food on my way home. Because you know how that goes. You're out drinking, now you're hungry, you want junk food. So I had some fries and a burger or whatever, and I remember I was drinking a shake. And I walked into my apartment to get undressed. I had a walk-in closet. Well, I walked into the closet to get undressed, and I noticed all my underwear were missing. Okay, I didn't have a dresser back then. I just had my clothes hanging on the clothes rod. And then I had like hat boxes, those round hat boxes open sitting on the floor and one had all my panties in it and one had all my bras in it and one had all my socks in it well the one that had all my panties in it was empty somebody had broken into my apartment while i was at work and stolen all my underwear and you know i kind of still had a buzz i'll be honest from you know having a couple drinks after work but i was instantly sobered up when i saw it like hold on a minute what where's all my underwear and then I looked and I saw there was a trail of pine needles uh, leading across the carpet <laughs> to the sliding glass patio door. Matter of fact, let me go back over to my apartment and see if that pine tree is still there. I guess there was a pine tree out front and I surmised using my sleuthing skills, somebody had climbed up the pine tree, gone on my balcony, jimmied open the sliding glass door <laughs> and went, made a beeline for my closet and stole my panties. Yeah, there it is. Look, there's the pine tree. Although now that I'm looking at it, that pine tree is way too far from my balcony for somebody to have climbed up that. I don't know how they got in. Ah, oh, that's a real head scratcher because there was literally a trail of pine needles on the carpet leading from the sliding glass door on the balcony into my closet. So golly, now I'm, now I'm curious. Anyway, long story short, I was freaked the f out and First thing I did, you know, I didn't know if, like, is there somebody still in my house? Like, they could be hiding somewhere, even though it was a small apartment. So I had and have a handgun. I'm not a big gun person, but I have a handgun. And so the first friggin' thing I did was grab my handgun. I, like, went around the apartment looking everywhere. Look, uh, uh. I mean, it was a small apartment, one bedroom, but it had a little closet with a washer dryer. I looked in there. I looked under the bed. I looked in the kitchen. I looked in the refrigerator. I looked in the toilet tank. I looked everywhere. There was nobody in the apartment, but oh, I was still way too freaked out to go to sleep. You know what I mean? Like I, I remember I, I mean, it was already like three in the morning. I remember laying on the bed crying, fully clothed with my gun, like, what am I gonna do? I mean, I suppose I could have just called the police right then and there, but I don't know what good that would have done. So what I did is I waited until the morning and then I got up and went to the apartment complex manager and I told her, and she was this really nice older lady from Minnesota. She had a very thick Minnesota accent. Oh, you know, don't call the police. They're not gonna be able to do anything anyway. You just need to go to Home Depot and get a, <laughs> I'll stop with the accent, and get a dowel. She told me just go buy a big wooden dowel, put that in your sliding glass door. That way nobody can jimmy the door open. Well, now that I think about it, she was probably just telling me not to call the police because she didn't want any negative publicity to come back on this apartment complex. So I don't know, what did I know? I didn't know. So I did, I went to Home Depot, I got the dang dowel, I stuck that in the door and it really didn't make me feel that much better. But I went to work that night at the casino and I told my employee, my uh, coworkers about what had happened. And they were all like, what are you, are you crazy? Call the police, go to the police, file a police report. So the next day I did, I went to the friggin' police. <laughs> And I filed a report and the woman who was taking my report actually started laughing as she was taking it. And she apologized. She said, oh, honey, I know this isn't funny. And by then, you know, a couple days had gone by and I could see the humor in the situation. I said, no, I understand. It is kind of funny. Nothing else was stolen, okay? Uh, my TV, my computer, whatever, electronics. The only thing missing was every single pair of panties that I had. Clean and used, I might add. <laughs> so... Golly, you know, I filled out the report and she asked me to estimate the value of it. It was like, oh, I mean, I had some pretty fancy Victoria's Secret stuff. So 
was a decent amount of money's worth of panties, I guess. I'm not sure what the going exchange rate for panties is. <laughs> anyway, I, I was uncomfortable sleeping there for a while, and I don't honestly remember now. It's funny how these things just fade from your memory, but you know, I guess after about a week, I just kind of went, well, all right, I'm just going to keep living here. And oh, because I thought, you know, there's no way I can just, if you remember, I broke my lease on the last apartment I just moved out of because somebody was drawing dicks on my car. Well, I didn't want to break another lease and pay another $1,300. So I didn't even ask about that. Like, obviously moving would have made me feel a lot better if I wasn't in the same, you know, at the scene of the crime anymore. Come to find out you can break a lease legally for something like that happening. Um, and they wouldn't have charged me. Well, I didn't know that. So I just <laughs> let enough time go by to where I felt comfortable living there again. And gosh, like I said, I ended up living there for like five years. And nothing bad else ever happened here. In fact, it was very enjoyable aside from the cockroaches and the panty thieves. But <laughs> now you might be wondering, did I ever find out who stole my panties? You know, I mean, it's not like Las Vegas Metropolitan Police put that case at the top of their list. There's way worse stuff going on in Vegas. So I don't even think they really investigated it. But I did do my own sort of, you know, thinking and snooping around. And the only lead I ever really came up with was one night when I was going down those stairs that I just showed you, you know, to get in my car to go to work because I'd go to work in the evenings. It was dark. It was wintertime. So it was already dark. And I could see in the apartment across the way from mine, standing in the sliding glass door of that balcony, was a naked man. And he was standing there, buck naked, probably well aware, you know, he had the lights on, he knew I could see him, and he was kind of just standing there. And so I thought, oh, is he trying to tell me something? <laughs> is he trying to tell me he stole my panties? <laughs> I mean, he wasn't wearing my panties. <laughs> he wasn't even holding any panties. I don't know, to this day, I don't know if that naked dude was the one who did it or if the, the person who did it might still be living here today. Anyway, believe it or not, the panty thing wasn't what made me leave this apartment. It was actually the boyfriend that I had. I mentioned I had a boyfriend. He made me get rid of my car. Well, he didn't make me, but I kind of let him convince me into getting rid of it because I was in this really weird relationship for two or three years with a guy who was, not only was he considerably younger than me, I think he was like nine years younger than me, he was also very conservative, like just very square. And I... If you've watched any of my videos, you know I am not. I'm anything but square. But I really like this guy. I don't know, we had a thing going. And so he, he stayed with me in this apartment most of the time. And then sometimes I'd go stay over at his house. And eventually it got to the point where we need to buy a house. Okay, let's just buy our own house. Enough with these apartments. Enough with these panty thieves and dick drawers. Let's just move into a house. Now this was late 2007. Dun, dun, dun. One of the worst times in history to buy a house. But in our defense, prices had already started going down a little bit. Like the bubble here in Vegas, I think really peaked in like 05, 06, like it was crazy. So by 07, prices had really started tanking. And so we thought, oh, <laughs> this is the perfect time. <laughs> little did we know that prices would continue to tank for like another year after that. We didn't know. Anyway, we decided to buy a house. And so that's why I ended up moving out of this apartment. <laughs> And why don't we get in the car again and go drive over to check out this house that I ill-advisedly bought with my much younger and conservative ex-boyfriend. Okay, I'll be honest, I don't even really want to drive by this house because I have extremely salty feelings about it and what happened, which... I'll get to in a minute. But I'll take one for the team. I'm gonna drive by it for this video. Uh, it's a pretty quiet neighborhood, so I don't really feel like I can park and get out and start talking, but this is actually gonna be the first time I've driven by this house in years. I s very assiduously avoid this neighborhood because I'm so salty about, well, I'll tell you what happened. Okay, it's coming up right here. It's the one with the van parked in the driveway and the fake green grass. Oh my gosh, look how cute that house is. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Okay, I'm just gonna park right down the street from it and tell you why I'm so salty about this house. Okay, so obviously I'm not the kind of person who'd wanna buy just any house. Uh, if you've ever flown into Vegas, you've probably looked out the window and seen these massive subdivisions of cookie cutter homes that all look identical. 
I didn't want to live in a place like that. Like, blow my brains out. That would not do me right. So I told my boyfriend, and thankfully he agreed, like, we need someplace unique. And so he was on board. Uh, I started looking around all these uh, real estate websites, and I found this really cool house that was built in 1939. Okay, 1939? What was in Vegas in 39? That's like before the Flamingo was built. Like, that's right around the time they were building the Hoover Dam. I mean, that's old. So I thought, how could there even be a house that old here? So, I, you know, the price dropped like $100,000 one month. I'm not kidding. The, at first, I just looked at it and went, oh, I could never afford that. But then they, she dropped the price by 100 k That's how crazy the real estate market was here back in the, well, 07, 08 days. Anyway, the price dropped by 100 k I went, well, maybe we could afford this house. Let's go look at it. So we went over and checked it out. And we both really liked it because it was so unique, custom built. Obviously, it was built in 1939. There was nothing else around here. And it had a basement, which is very unique for Vegas, a walkout basement with like these French doors that opened out into the backyard. It was third of an acre. Just a really quirky house with a lot of quirky cool characteristics but my favorite and the one that probably sealed the deal for both of us is when you walk down into the basement which was fully finished you know it was like you could live in the basement it was carpeted and everything when you walk down the stairs there was like this bookshelf built into the wall on one side and if you pushed on the back of the bookshelf it swung open to reveal a secret hidden room oh my god i don't know what these people were doing in this house back in 1939 but it probably had something to do with the letters m-o-b anyway let me at least uh, roll down the window so i can you know i'll zoom in well you really can't see it from this angle because there's this stupid construction going on next door and oh gosh i can't even get the camera in focus ah Okay, never mind. I'll just go ahead and roll my window back up so I can rant and rave as loud as I want without all the neighbors calling the police on me. I'll just throw some B-roll photos of the house over top of this video so you can see what I'm talking about. Anyway, it was a really nice house. Unfortunately, it was way outside my price range. But back then, they would approve any BS loan, no matter what, if any, documentation you had. So... <laughs> my boyfriend and I moved into the house. It was all in my name because he was nine years younger than me, even though he made way more money than I did. Uh, and it's a really interesting story what he did for work. He was a casino host and I'll probably end up having to make a whole nother video talking about that because it was what he did for work was super interesting. He made a lot of money. I didn't, but I had a longer employment record. I mean, he was at this time I was 20. No, I was 30. I think when I bought this house, 30, 31, he was like 23. I think he was barely out of college. Well, I was going to say he's barely out of diapers, but he was barely out of college. Uh, so he didn't have a long employment history. I was the one that had to get the loan. Well, guess what happened? As soon as we move into the dang house, we went from living in that one bedroom apartment together where we were kind of always together. Now we're in this big house. And so he kind of made the, the basement into like his man cave. So he'd go down there and watch baseball and law and order. Those were his two favorite things to watch, baseball and law and order. I don't like baseball and I sure don't like law and order, but that's all he wanted to do. So he hung out down there doing that. I was upstairs doing my thing. Like, you know, we would just text each other. It was bad. So we, we drifted apart. And to be honest, it was for the best because like I said, he was conservative. So much so that when we moved into that house, he made me put all my kooky stuff into this one room. He gave me one room down in the basement to be like my kooky room. So my mannequin, at the time I only had one mannequin, my maps, you know, world maps. He thought that was weird. I can't hang that on the upstairs. That's got to go in my kooky room. So I basically had this little room in the basement where all my fun stuff was cluttered up and you know, I wouldn't have been happy in that relationship and we really weren't well suited for each other. We had a lot of fun together and he was a very, and is a very kind and good person. He was a great boyfriend. So I'm not saying anything bad about him. We just both made some very foolish mistakes. And the biggest one of all was buying this dang house. Now, I don't want this video to be 10 hours long, so I'll just try to tell this as briefly as possible. But we broke up. He, We tried to live together as roommates, but that didn't work out. So he moved out. Now, all of a sudden, I had to pay this $2,600 mortgage myself. Now, remember, my first apartment was $560 a month. My second apartment was $600. The five years that I lived in that third place, I think maybe it went up to like 650. Rent was cheap back then. So now all of a sudden I have to pay $2,600 a month on this mortgage? Forget about it. But I, you know, I was panicking. What am I gonna do? Like, 
you know, this was in the real estate crash and a lot of people were foreclosing on their homes, you know, just walking away, let the bank take it. And so a lot of people were like, what? Just walk away from it. Well, I wasn't raised that way. My mom raised me to honor my obligations and not Welsh on a debt, which that's probably offensive to say that. Uh, apologies if I have any Welsh viewers. Anyway, I was raised to honor a debt and I signed the papers on that dang mortgage. So I felt like I had to keep paying it. So, well, I, got, I decided I'd have to get some roommates, which I had never had roommates before. And man, I had some doozy roommates. I mean, <laughs> I won't go into all of them. One time I had three hillbillies living in my basement and one of them only had one leg, which apologies if you only have one leg. I don't mean anything bad about that. My, In fact, my good friend, uh, one of my good friends in Tacoma only has one leg. But these people were just weird, okay? They were just real creepy. They were doing weird amputee fetish videos in my basement. They were slobs. But they were paying me and that's all I cared about because then I could keep feeding... Well, I'll just go ahead and say it. It was Chase Bank, and I'm still very salty at Jamie Dimon, the CEO, for being so greedy. I mean, I tried everything I could to get a loan modification. I got a pro bono attorney, and I filed this, and I filed that, and I sent him paper and proof of income, and, you know, I really want to stay in the house. Is there anything you can do? I mean, I did that for years. I moved into that house at the end of 07, and I didn't end up leaving until 2011, so four years I lived there and I was banging my head against the wall the whole time trying to ask the bank if they would just write down the amount that I owed. I bought the house for 380000 which if you look at today's house prices, it's probably worth that again. But at that time, it, it, in the crash, it was only worth about a hundred grand or 90 grand. So I just felt like, come on guys, work with me. If you write down the principal that I owed at 200000 I'll stay in the house. I'll pay two hundred for it. I just can't afford to finish paying off 380 because at that point I was all my mortgage payments were just paying the interest I wasn't even paying any principal mortgages are a scam Ugh. I said I wasn't gonna go on and on about this but obviously it's still very personal to me and I understand it was my fault for signing those documents I'm I 100% assume liability I do think that the bank could have done a little bit more to work with me they didn't finally I got somebody to agree to a short sale so basically what that means is they'll let you sell the house for less than you owe on it. And then you just, you walk away and the bank gets the money, whatever. So I ended up selling the house and it's probably the same people living there now. And this is why I'm so friggin' salty about it. They paid $112,000 cash for that house. $112,000. Now remember, I offered to pay the bank two hundred, dollars but it wouldn't have been cash. I wanted a mortgage for that. Well, they turned that down. I'm pretty sure it's because back then the banks were getting all these kickbacks and write-offs from the federal government. That's what started me nude modeling too. You know, I'm trying to pay my friggin' mortgage. You know, business was slow all over town in the recession. So I started posing nude and doing fetish modeling on top of it all just to try to, oh my God, I did some crazy stuff just to pay Jamie Dimon his blood money. So Mr. Dimon, if you happen to be watching this video, I hope you're happy. Okay, I'm wrapping this up, I promise. Uh, I short sold the house, they finally accepted this offer. And well, after that I was like, well, I'm not moving back into an apartment, now I'm used to living in a house. By then I had acquired a little trailer, a pop-up travel trailer, like where am I gonna store that in an apartment? No, I decided I needed to buy another house, but I was gonna be smart about it this time. This was the depths of the housing crash, this was late 2011 like right around christmas 2011 so i started looking around at houses in vegas and i did a search on the mls listings just out of curiosity how many single family residences are there for sale for fifty thousand dollars or less and five thousand listings came up that's how bad the real estate crash was back here about 10 years ago yeah here it is 10 years later i'm waiting for it to happen again and Gosh, I keep waiting and they just keep building more houses. Who can say what'll happen? Anyway, back then I found a house for $84,000 and I ha was very lucky to have a friend who had the means to help me buy it and I paid him back every penny of it. Um, but, you know, obviously I wouldn't have been able to get a mortgage myself after just doing a short sale, the, especially back then, forget about it. My credit was shot for a long time after that short sale. But I was lucky to have a friend who helped me and you know, I paid him back. It was only $84,000. It wasn't that much money. So I just hustled. I did. I still kept nude modeling and fetish modeling and doing all these crazy jobs, which I'll make a whole nother video about that sometime. Made all the money, paid him back, you know, bought this. Now I'm living in this smaller, modest new house. And that house, well, it was my fifth and final place that I lived in Vegas. But I'm not going to drive over there and look at it 
because I actually still own it. I mean, if you want to see what it looks like, uh, there's some videos I made earlier in my YouTube career where I showed the exterior of the house and the interior. Uh, so you can go back and watch those if you're curious. But when I moved to Death Valley, I didn't sell the house, even though uh, housing prices were at, I think, an even higher high than they were back in 2005, 2006. I bought that place for 84000 I probably could have sold it for like uh, 300000 So I could have made a tidy profit on it. But I didn't. Because... After all these moves and places I lived and dicks I had drawn on my car and panties stolen out of my closet and, you know, greedy banks making me <laughs> do degenerate things to pay a mortgage. Well, at the end of it all, I guess I, you could say I learned a lesson. And now that I own a house, free and clear, well, I don't want to let go of it, you know? I guess I sort of have like this weird depression era mindset, even though I didn't live through the depression, just the recession. I have a recession era mindset, like, no, I got to hang on to that house. What if I need it again? What if something terrible happens and I, I need to go back and live there? You know, like what happened the first time <laughs> I moved out of Vegas? I moved back to California, remember, after my first apartment. And, well... I missed the hustle and bustle of Vegas. And so while I am, uh, you know, I'm really enjoying living out in the middle of nowhere and listening to the coyotes howl and watching the tumbleweed tumble, well, what if one day I get tired of living in Death Valley and I feel the siren's call of Vegas luring me in again? Because that's what it is. It's like the sirens in isn't that in Homer's Odyssey? The sirens sing that beautiful song that just seduces you. Well, even though it's Vegas and, well, you've seen from this driving around today, it's not the most beautiful city in the world. It has its own weird appeal. And I'm only living 85 miles away from it now. So, yeah, I'm separated by two or three mountain ranges. But even though there's two or three mountain ranges and 85 miles between my new house and my old stomping grounds... At night, when the moon is just right, if I listen closely over the howling of the coyotes and over the howling of the police sirens here in Vegas, well, I can hear the alluring siren song of Sin City calling me back. Come back, wonder hussy. All is forgiven. Vegas is waiting for you. <laughs> Well, who knows if I'll ever actually succumb to the siren's call, but for now, I want to keep my options open. So I'm keeping that house and I'm not going to drive by it now and freak out the people who are currently renting it. Okay, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this weird tour of the five places I lived in Las Vegas. I know I did. You'd think that this would make me nostalgic and depressed to drive around looking at all these places, but I actually thought it was fun. And matter of fact, now I'm going to celebrate by going shopping. That's right. I'm in the big city. By golly, I need some new clothes and I'm going to go buy some. Toodles! Toodles!